Hello, good evening and welcome to the Villa Park podcast. Happy Easter to you all. Uh, it feels like ages ago. <laughs> I don't know if it's like, it's like Christmas, this Easter bank holiday weekend. All the days seem to roll into one, but yeah, it seems like ages we're on the pod, Kev. But in between that time, we've managed to beat Wolverhampton Wanderers. Um, and it was a fairly comfortable victory. Um, first of all, happy Easter to you. How are you doing? Happy Easter, Richard. I'm all good, mate. How are you? Yeah, good, mate. Good, good. Went to visit family over the weekend. So Lovely. drive back up to Newcastle yesterday. So couldn't do the show last night, but um, but yeah, had to had to jump on tonight to to reflect on a wonderful victory. Yeah, it it was. I think the word there is exactly the word I've been using. Comfortable. It really that second half. I think it was obviously um, epitomised by the uh, the delay because obviously uh, I think it was a radio radio issue with one of the uh, officials. And then Douglas Louise conducting the crowd to the uh, tune of small lift, get battered everywhere they go. Um, and I was just thinking to myself, watching it like, you know, the, the weather's turned nice. Uh, obviously, daylight savings coming in. Uh, sorry, the, we're going the other way out of that now, obviously, um, in terms of, um, you know, British summertime. We're turning up against a team that we've got a terrible record against in the recent seasons. They're not really laying a glove on us other than that eight Nori chance. And... This is all a bit easy, isn't it? Really, it shouldn't be like this. It shouldn't it be like it's Wolves at home? And I, I was thinking about three a three goal comeback like like a uh, couple of couple of years back. So yeah, it was um, it was thoroughly enjoyable afternoon, mate. Certainly helped to cap off a nice Easter weekend. Exactly, exactly. We're going to get into the into kind of performances, general thoughts on the game, wiping that smug grin off Gary O'Neill's face, um, and uh, and yeah, maybe talk. We are going to do a full preview for for Man City at some point, but um, talk talk about kind of some of the issues that occurred, potential issues that occurred in the game ahead of that. But first of all, we'll get into comments, but I do want to um, give a shout out as well. Hit that subscribe button, guys. Hit that like button as well. We're only 25 away from 3,600. Um, so if we can hit that tonight, that would be amazing. Um, so do like, do hit that subscribe button. And the link is at the top of the chat. If you want to become a member, if you want to um, donate any super chats, etc., etc., to help support the channel, that would be amazing if you uh, want to do that. Um, so let's get into it. Um, Damien said, we need to win the next few games. It's important we beat Man City. We also need to beat Brentford. And then I can't remember. Um, European League match, I can't remember if we're at home or away. We're at home um, first leg. But yeah, I'll, I'll come on to that in a bit because in terms of like the kind of needing to win, um, it, that's a definitely good point. So I will I will come on to that in a second. Lewis, good evening to you, mate. Deontay, happy Monday, everyone. We're in the home stretch, exactly, of Premier League fixtures. Good evening to you, Michelle. Uh, Gary in the house. Hi, everyone. Great win. And now a free hit on Wednesday. Um, exactly. Uh, will up the villa. Uh, Michael, hello, hello, hello to you, mate. Thank you for joining. Duncan as well. Good evening to you. Adamski, brilliant. Mike, uh, Michael says, Kev, you don't need to say a word. 100% correct as always. So I think Michael's just jumped off now because he, he knows everything that you're going to say. Is, I love he's it. right, I love mate. It. Sensible, mate. Rachel, great to have you in. Uh, PJJ, good evening to you. Uh, Gary said, lucky wonders were sheep in wolves' clothing on Saturday. Exactly. Dristos, uh, greetings from Athens. Geyasu, Kevin? No, Yasu, that is Yasu. Christos. Oh, Yasu. Yasu. Yasu Sorry, Pile. Yasu. Yasu. <laughs> good love man, it. good love man. It, yeah, Leal at home. We do definitely need to win our home games. Good evening to you, uh, Willie. Good evening. Uh, not long now till the 4K up the villa. That would be amazing. If we could hit that before the end of the season, Kev, 4,000 subscribers would be just amazing. brilliant. Be brilliant. Peter, with the last team to beat Man City, why not again? As Luca Dean would say, another one. Yes. Uh, yeah, good night, Michael. Yeah. Um, Cheers, Mike. <laughs> See you soon. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, we've got to play for all. Exactly, exactly. We definitely have. We'll come, come to that later. I'm sure Kev's got a positive message for us all. But yes, on to the first comment, um, you know, around that kind of, you know, it's just about wins, isn't it? And I think that game on Saturday kind of epitomised that. It wasn't it wasn't the, the most expansive of performances. It wasn't the, you know, we we, we, we were quite clinical in, our, in the way that we finished the you know, particularly the Moussa Diaby chance. And I don't think we really had to extend ourselves too much, but it doesn't matter at the moment. It's just about getting the three points on the board. 
Yeah, absolutely correct. I mean, that's that that is always the mark I think of a of a good team over the years. Yeah, I've heard so many pundits and commentators say good team when they're not playing so well, or you know when they maybe the backs against the wall. There's a few injuries, suspensions. You just got to get the win. You got to get it over the line. You know, I've heard many many times that been said over the years. So we're a good team. And we're in that situation now where we're absolutely doing that. It wasn't a great second half performance against Luton, but we got the win. Wasn't brilliant at Brentford at times. We got the win. Burnley, back end of December, we got the win towards the end of the game. We've done it a few times. Then there's obviously been situations like Sheffield United at home and West Ham away where we weren't great, but we managed to salvage from a defeat, uh, a draw, a couple of valuable points. Cheers to Nicolo Zaniolo. And we've done that, you know, time and time again. And, and I would say certainly at the weekend, I don't feel like really, really got out of second, third gear at times. Clearly, Wolves had some challenges in terms of attacking options, but it seems to be forgotten that we also have got quite a lot of injuries. And um, and Gary O'Neill has been saying... Well, and you and know, our captain suspended as well. Exactly, yeah. yeah. If only his auntie had testicles, she'd be his uncle, but they should be fourth <laughs> in the... Should be they, they should be fourth in the league. And if they'd had Cunha and Neto and Huang, they would have won. Well, and where would we be if we'd had Mings... Buendia, McGinn, Kamara, Watkins for the second half, Jacob Ramsey, et cetera, et cetera. It's like, it just, just doesn't count for Villa. Everyone else it counts for. Do you know why? Do you know why that's the case? Because Unai doesn't moan. Unai he's doesn't got make a no excuse. excuse culture. Yeah, he just gets on with it. He's not constantly piping on at the fourth official. He's not constantly making digs in the media, not trying to defend it. We have a bad defeat. He takes it on the chin. He mm. takes it on the chin. It's just really refreshing. And it, that must really permeate through the players as well. Exactly, exactly. And uh, yeah, you know, it, it's funny, isn't it? A couple of the managers, you know, the likes of Gary O'Neill sort of mentioning it a few times about how well they've played, how in many injuries they've got, how many chances they're creating. Sean Dyche, I see, is doing it as well with Everton. And, and, and Pochettino is probably the most ridiculous one where he... He should be fourth in the table if it was based on the data. And then he goes and draws against 10-man Burnley. It's like, mm. at least say it after you've maybe beaten Burnley 3 or 4-0. But don't say it before. But yeah, it, yeah. It, it's just a, it, it just shows what a, I guess, a seasoned professional manager we've got. Like, maybe Emery would have said stuff like that in these Arsenal days. But he's, he's uh, you know, maybe that's a case of the fact that he's learned and he's gone through the, the process and he's... And he's, he's, he's kind of, yes, he's, he's looking at where we are now. He's expecting more from the players. But also he's like, if I, if I make excuses for the players, if I if I say, oh, well, we'd be better if we had this player or that player, that's doing down the players that I've already got in my team. And I don't want to do that. So maybe he's kind of learning that, he's, you know, to keep those standards high, it doesn't matter who comes in, they've got to match up to his standards. I just think he's extremely mature i think it's so refreshing for a football manager i think uh michael totally agree with what michael says uh his comment about pep and arteta behaving on the pitch just shows the class of emery by walking off and if you've seen that third third coming back but um oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. um it's it's so true i mean mm. it, it, it isn't about him i mean i like klopp's passion don't get me wrong when he punches the air it's great and he gets the crowd going right and and all, all that's fantastic right of course it is but he and Arthur Mona, is he clock? You know, you know, obviously done my German accent before. I won't do it again. Uh, Mona about everything. Um, Arteta, my God, is there a more annoying man outside outside of Bruno Fernandes maybe than, than, than Arteta in the league? And then Pep started to get like it now a little bit. You know, he makes these sly little comments. And at the end of the pitch, why is he having a go at Greenwich on the pitch? Like, who are you? Like, okay, you're one of the best managers ever, but like he's doing it to make a point. Like he's still, you know, and then he's trying to get him get involved in between, you know, Harland and um and Gabriel, wasn't it? It's like just yeah. why's it got why's it all gotta be about you? Well, we've got this guy that's come in and revolutionized the club, changed everything with largely, you know, most of the same personnel, decimated by injuries, considering the squad we've got, that should impact us even more. And he's just holding himself with the utmost class, integrity. We, we've, had, we've been knocked this season a few times. We've had some, we've had some bad defeats, but the way we respond, I think, is because of the way that manager is, is, is instilling in that team a mentality of, you know, solutions not excuses. We're going to have problems. We're going to have to get over it. We're accountable. We're responsible. You know, we don't make excuses. Sometimes it's going to go our way. Sometimes it's not. It's going to balance itself out. And I just think it really it must really come through to the players and. I love it. They're they're all so humble in their interviews. I just think he's brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, 
talk about the first half because, um, I mean, we were both at the game. Um, and, and I thought the way that, to be, to be fair to Wolves, the way they started the game, I thought without looking too threatening, um, you know, in terms of like numerous clear-cut chances, I thought they, they controlled the game quite well. And, you know, particularly down our left-hand side, you know, Moreno and, um, and Rogers find it quite difficult to pick up Semedo and um, uh, what's, what's the other guy's name? Uh, uh, Sarabia. Uh, and find it pretty tough. And Doyle was seemed to be spraying the ball about, and yeah, it was it was almost like you know this 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 is this is pretty tricky at the moment. We we can't seem to get a hold of him. And you know, Wolves for the for that first 15, 20 minutes were were pretty good. Yeah, they they were almost like a team that you know had everything going really well for them, except for the forward line. And obviously, they've got a lot of injuries in the forward yeah, line. Yeah, that, so... that young kid, man, I felt sorry yeah. for him. But yeah, <laughs> I mean, I did feel sorry for Wolves for about I don't know all of four point two seconds, <laughs> um, because I, I actually I mean, we said this on, on the on the preview pod. I actually think Gary O'Neill has done an unbelievable job with the team that I thought were looking like they were going to be a relegation fight this season, um, and that's epitomised by that. By that first half performance particular I thought they were really good I thought they they really made it difficult for us I thought Gomez was good I thought Doyle was good obviously you've mentioned Semedo um you know I thought I just thought generally that, that they were decent I think Lamina is a really good player um eight nor is obviously good couldn't quite beat the world's number one but you know I think I think they've just got some good players you know they're very tidy on the ball mm. they kept ticking it over really well but um you know like almost when Arsenal would really want to just pass it in the net and they just lack that killer instinct. It was like with Wolves, they just lacked any kind of p- attacking potency. In fact, their only re- real chance came from a mix-up, didn't it, between the Quivar defenders? Well, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, it was almost like we were kind of just, you know, f- feeling them out almost, seeing what they had to offer. You know, maybe that young kid could have jumped on an opportunist moment and got something, but he wasn't going to trouble the two centre-halves or anything and it was going to take something pretty special. But yeah, you know, or a mistake, and it and it came up with a bit of a defensive mix-up, like I say, decent move. Ball comes in from um, from Sarabia, I think it was. I think it might have been Tielemans or Carlos got in each other's way. Comes to eight Nori, and this is why we've got the best keeper in the world because it, that, that that save he's he, he's got to get that move trademarked because mm. every time he comes out, he stands up, makes himself huge, and then just drops that leg at the last minute and. Um, yep. What a save, though. I, I I couldn't believe it. almost happened in slow motion. So I was right behind it. And I thought, is it ain't normally offside? Has everyone kind yep. of stopped? Because, and then all of it, and then it goes out for a corner. And you're thinking, what a save that is. Yeah, brilliant reactions. Absolutely brilliant. He is just, he's just fantastic, isn't he? Isn't he, Emmy Martinez? And this is the thing that we're just used to it. Just, he doesn't get anywhere near the credit he should get, really, does he? For no. how good he is. Other than the, the uh, the mistake against Forest away, uh, I think for their second goal, I can't really think of a mistake he's made this season. I mean, I'm sure he has made a couple of mistakes, but I can't really think of anything particularly. No, um, maybe a couple of crosses, or I don't yeah, know, maybe sometime he could come out for something, but or corners that he maybe could have been stronger at. But yeah, I mean, there's a general rule: he hasn't done anything wrong in any way, shape, or form. And yeah, you just... you got to be thinking that's a that's a key moment in terms of winning us the points. Absolutely, absolutely. And that is that is so valuable. I mean, how many times has he saved us this season in games where he's made absolutely fantastic saves? And then you know, we've obviously gone on to take the points at the end and God, I hope he never, I hope he never leaves. <laughs> I hope he plays till he's 50. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like I've said, I've said so many times, you know, a good keeper gets you 12 to 15 points a season and he has to have got us around that this season already. Uh, I know he hasn't had as many clean sheets this season. I think that's his seventh in the in the Premier League. But in terms of like you know key moments, like we were talking about that Bournemouth game, you know we were talking other games where he's made like key saves at key moments. It's um it's fantastic. Well, like, and 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 what what a you know what a what a goalkeeper he is and and captain yeah. in the side as well. Yes, uh, on Saturday, but yeah, and obviously that that was a, that was a real moment. And then we kind of then. Um, started to come into it a little bit more, you know, Morgan Rogers having some really good runs on the ball. And I think with, with young players as well, you know, with an, an experienced player like um, Semedo, he is, you see this with like the wide players, they're going to test a young player coming into the Premier League. They're going to cheat a little bit, you know, um, the West Ham fullback did it um, 
what's his name? Sue Fowl. He did it where they don't get, they don't go back. They just gamble on going forward. They go, right, you, 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 let's see what you can do against me. But as Rogers kind of got used to it a little bit more, as he then got, got a couple of runs going, he started to, he started to come into it. And I feel like he's starting to find his place in the team a little bit more. And yeah, some of those runs are really threatening. And you can see one of those is going to come off this season. I can see it now. I'll tell you what, right, he's had a bit of a shaky start. I'm going to say it now. He's going to be a star for us, like this kid. You can just see it. It, it, it could have really pain, pain me to say what I'm going to say next, but if we do get forced into a sale for FFP reasons, and that sale is Jacob Ramsey, which would kill me because I absolutely love him, because obviously the pure profitability you'd get from an academy graduate coming through, I think you've almost got a ready-made replacement there in Morgan Rogers. Yeah. You know, in terms of driving with the ball, in fact, in fact, but an even more physical. I think strong. he's a bit stronger. Yeah, he's not quite yeah. as quick, um, but he is. He is. He is stronger. But and you've got to take into account he's getting used to you know Premier League's getting used to playing with, with in a team like Villa, and you could see yeah. a couple of passes that he, you know maybe a little bit sharper he would get through, or you know I think if he was if we had McGinn in that side on on on, on Saturday. He would have received the ball 10 or 15 yards further forward and then he'd have been running right at the heart of... He'd get mm. past that midfield then he'd be running right at the heart of the defender. But because he was playing that little bit... Like he was receiving the ball that little bit deeper, he was then having to run past two players to then get to the heart of their defence and that was just a little bit too far for him, if you know what I mean. Matt, he was running out of steam a little bit. So, yeah, he. Um, I thought he was I thought he was encouraging and that, and that kind of got us that territory that we needed. Um, and then obviously we then score on, on 36 minutes and we've talked about these players coming coming into coming back into form Kev you know these I guess what could be deemed fringe players just around Christmas just after Christmas free kick from Louise Bailey lays it across gets a slight deflection and then what a finish from Moussa Diaby you know no no doubt in his mind that he was going to wrap that left foot around it and straight into straight into the net. Yeah, I do think the keeper should have should have saved it though. He did. Yeah, yeah. I think he was maybe slightly unsighted by um. It was a Kilman yeah. who flew himself at the ball. So yeah, yeah. It could have got a deflection off Kilman, and then you know he would have been floundering anyway. But yeah, it, maybe he should have done better. Yeah, but but I do I do think the old adage buy a ticket, win the raffle. My uh, my way of playing football still. You know, if you don't have a shot, you ain't going to score. And you know, there's a few times, and I wish we would put our foot through the ball because. I mean, Cashy did it in the cup game, didn't he? Against Borough, took a deflection, mm-hmm. went in, and this one obviously went. You know, it was it was good power, and if you think he hit it with power, even if even if it is safe, you might then pick up pick up obviously the rebound. But yeah, just what we needed. Diaby now takes himself into five assists and goals for the season, which again I think is only uh, us and Man City have got four players that have done that, so that's obviously fantastic. Um, and yeah, just what we needed as well in the game because I did think Diaby had been a little bit quiet. I think I was actually questioning, like, you know, with balls a bit on top, like, mostly. What's going on with his formation? You know, really, are we, we're looking like we've, we're, we're lacking a bit in midfield. Should Tim have played to just try and nullify it a little bit? And then all of a sudden, goal time. And it was just the tonic. And weird, actually, because the first time in a long time I've not I've, I've not thought about VAR. I thought it's definitely a goal. Brilliant. Let's go back, let's go back which is which is nice. Well, um, I... I... I say I'm in the whole tent. I was in the whole tent, so I was a bit for like obviously I, it's right at the other end. I actually was thinking it was Bailey offside because I'm really? thinking how has he had that much space? Yeah. Like, but then obviously you were watching a match of the day and stuff and the highlights afterwards, and you kind of see he made the he made the run from from really deep. Um, and it was it was kind of like a delayed free kick. You know, Louise was he hesitated and then went again. But yeah, he was well on side, and I was thinking, you know, where, where's the marking in, in that situation? But yeah, it was it was a great finish and and brilliant for him. I, you know, I think that's was that seven or eight goals for Villa this season now. And mm-hmm. um, you know, he's took we, we're talking on. We'll come to him later. You know, his key part in in the second goal. And like I said, it's 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 about these players now. You know, having some real contributions. And you know, I think Rachel mentioned it before when you've you know Wolves is injuries are all their three four main attackers whereas we can still have the likes of on that at that time on the pitch we had Watkins DRB Bailey you know that's a Rogers that's a threat for any team that they're that they're coming up against despite the other injuries that we've got 
Yeah, but for the second half, you could also argue we could have had Ollie Watkins, Jacob Ramsey and Emi Bundia in the front three positions. Yeah, you know? yeah, but, you know, quality is quality. Like, is yeah, for, you know, you've still got you've still got an Italian international, Colombian international, uh, Jamaican international and a French international. Like, you Good know, work, Villa. It's, Good not, work, Villa. It's, it's not a 19 year old striker who, like, who's come through the, the academy. Like, you know, I have you have to feel, you know, you have to say like we have you know in fairness to him we have got some options there but you've yeah, got to you've got to make you've got to make you've got to make the chances still well yeah you know what that's good um good good work villa bad work wolves in it so you know maybe they should have built the squad a bit better yes 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 um but yeah second half um came you know obviously fairly comfortable as you've you've touched on but i think it was really you know ignited with I don't think I don't think um, Moreno was having the best of games, you know. Despite us being under in control, I thought I thought if anything was going to come about, it was going to be through him kind of making mistakes. I don't, like I say, sometimes in defensive positions, I don't think Rogers necessarily helps too much. But no. those substitutions, you know, um, Zaniolo and Dina really did, really did like make a real positive impact on the game. And, you know, Duran was already on the pitch and he, he was, he was actually, it was a good game for him to play, you know, to be, to be matched up against a Max Kilman um, or a Bueno or a, a Totti because he was, you know, they're physical players and he really loved the battle, but yeah, what, I mean, great substitutions to make and, and what an impact they had and, and obviously had a key part in the second goal. Yeah, they are like a couple of they're like a couple of bullies coming into the playground, weren't they? They just absolutely like just got amongst it. It was brilliant. Like someone like set set. Uh, yeah, the Bash Brothers. There you go. Yeah, mm. someone just like ignited them. It was brilliant to see. Um, again, Zaniolo is a perfect example. Like Diaby, you know, he's again having another contribution. He came on and, and really made an impact, didn't he? In that in that second yeah. half, really did, really did, and obviously fantastic turn. You know, a great tackle from Duran, great turn from Zaniolo, driving run, and then tees up um, tees up Esri for an unbelievable finish. I mean, that if that that had been a Brazilian doing that, they'd be talking about it all day long. Yeah, but there's no way, <laughs> no way he meant it, no way he shanked it, didn't he? Shanked it. Shanked yeah, it. It, it was it was a great run though. Like he was, you know, it was really good play from Zaniolo. I actually thought maybe the pass was a little bit behind. Um, a little bit behind Diaby, but Diaby, you know, I think he'd seen maybe Konza running behind, beyond Konza, then full pelt. And it's not, not something that we know in where we're used to seeing from Konza. Usually he's kind of more defensive minded playing in that right fullback position. But yeah, obviously I think he's maybe got the confidence now because he's been in the England side and he's had a great week bombing on. I think the ball bobbled up slightly and it kind of hit his, hit off the top of his boot and the bottom of his shin pad and then looped up. And like you say, I mean, to to, to have the, to do that, to go over the goalkeeper and then, then hit the hit the far post and evade the defender as well as uh, as D- John Duran was um was something special. But yeah, I'm, obviously we don't care. And, you know, 2-0 uh, midway through that second half, I was thinking, yeah, it's comfortable, but we've seen Wolves come back from this position before. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I keep I keep getting like bad flashbacks. I said it when we played Forest and obviously we were three up. They came back to three two and obviously there was Nuno Espirito Santo, the Wolves manager when they did that comeback again and I thought, oh my God, they're gonna get a third in a minute. And I just had keep having these like waves of panic and it was the same, you know, actually getting to two nil worried me more because it brought back the memories of that three two defeat. Um but then they just didn't really look like you know, they had one header, didn't they? Went over the bar, but it didn't really look like anything was going to happen second half, and it, and it was just so comfortable. Mm. And it's nice, isn't it? Because I don't feel like the players had to exert too much energy, really. So, um, just what you want going into a into a title decider on Wednesday night. <laughs> we'll, we'll come to that in a bit, but yeah, it's um, it was it wasn't, and I think you know, I it was us that probably looked like we were going to go on to, to score more, particularly straight after that goal. I think we yeah. had a bit of a flurry, two or three chances for. For um for Zaniolo, really good, really good work again from Duran. Puts the ball across Diaby, cuts it back for for Zaniolo, who uh, has a low shot that the keeper saves. Good save actually, and then he, he has another kind of half chance as well. But yeah, it, it was really good to see. And um, I think I think what's what's key is that you know hopefully Ramsey's coming back to fitness soon. We're obviously going to have McGinn coming back on Saturday. 
and you think like I've said before like in this time if in this time of the season it's win at all costs and what have you what have you got coming off the bench that can change a game and at the moment we've got players who can who can cause problems for for opposition Zaniolo's come on against West Ham rescued a point for us Diaby and Dini came on against Luton got us three points Zaniolo and um and Duran and uh and Dini came on on Saturday and kind of got us the goal to to seal the win um it's like it's like th- th- this is this is what you need in, 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 at this part of the season because Tottenham have got their players coming back. They'll have situations where they've got substitutions who'll come on and have an impact. We need to have the same thing, and it's both parts. You know, if we're winning one nil, let's say let's say we're winning one nil to, uh, on Wednesday night, and, we, and we're in the we're in the last 15, 20 minutes, and he can bring on Longley, he can bring on uh, Moreno or Dina, whichever one. He, you know, he can make substitutions that are going to either protect. Or go after a result, and that this is what it's about now. Yeah, absolutely, and and it's such a good point, Rich, about obviously the subs making an impact because considering the injuries, considering the obviously, suspensions, it shows how good our squad is. It shows what a great job, obviously, that um, Emery's done with the existing squad, and obviously what's been added to it. That even though this, some of these players have flattered to deceive at times, you know, particularly Duran, uh, Diaby at times, and Iolo, they are. They are contributing. You know, obviously, Longley's more than played his part this season at times. Kamara obviously did his bit before his injury. And to think we've got players coming back into this as well. You know, just just think, you know, we, we have a situation where you've got players coming on. It, 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 when Irogunum came on, I thought he actually did really well. Yeah, yeah, he made one really good tackle. Yeah, yeah, and looked really good and looked sharp with the ball. So you've got like Kessel Hayden, nice to see him make, make his full debut for us as well. So that's obviously great. But you think you're going to add to that team post Man City you're going to add McGinn back to it hopefully Ramsey might be back maybe maybe Wednesday will be too soon but he'll be back soon after that you're going to start adding more players to this as well it's going to be it's going to be even more exciting isn't it then then what you're going to do then when when, when Ramsey and McGinn's fit you can't you can't play everybody can you then you then you're no. bringing a Rodgers on maybe bringing a Diaby on yeah exactly exactly it's you know, it, it, it's, a, it's a good problem to have, but, you know, being able to utilise those five substitutes, especially with the European games coming up as well, it's it, it's going to be really, really, really important. Um, just just on a slight kind of um, downer, um, Ollie Watkins um, was, was replaced at half-time, um, probably should have scored in the first half. I, 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 I thought he took an extra touch when he probably yeah. could have shot earlier. Um but yeah, probably should have scored. We haven't heard anything today about the injury. Um, I don't know if you have, but the rumours are it's a slight hamstring strain. Maybe it's taken off as a as a, as a precaution. Are you of the opinion that if he's to if he's if he's to miss any game, it's 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 potentially a a one to miss like on Wednesday, or are you thinking no, like you know we want our Best foot forward, best team available, and and, and we want Ollie to be to be to be fighting fit. I'm of I'm of the latter viewpoint, Richard. Um, mm-hmm. I, I knew think you it, would be. Yeah, I think if we were fighting relegation, I think if it, if it was um, if we were say Nottingham Forest and we had Ollie Watkins up front, or I don't know, you've got Aaron E, whoever it is, I'd be saying yeah, miss the Man City game away because we're definitely going to lose that almost certainly. Um, if you had to pick one, but um, no, I I look at it and think. I don't think they're as good as they used to be, really. I think they're on the ropes a little bit. They've got their own injury problems. Um, they will certainly be let's be clear, right? You know, it's you've got you've got to cause a bit of worry, haven't you, in someone's mind. Sport at all levels is very much about psychology. You know, look at classic example, you know, I always think about in the nineteen nineties and you know, the British tennis players and they can never get over that hoodoo. Look at Jimmy White and Stephen Hendry, no matter what Stephen Hendry always used to beat Jimmy White. Look at recent years, someone plays Djokovic and it's just, you know, that, that that's just that weird like aura. Um, well, Man City have been dominant for so, so long. All of a sudden they get, I know Sky Sports forgot about it at the weekend because Arsenal getting a draw was apparently was better than Aston Villa having 22 shots, the most that, that Pep's ever faced. But, you know, short memories, Sky, don't forget that. But the way they played only, what, three, four months ago at Villa Park, we were absolutely unbelievable. They, they'll remember that game. They'll have to remember that game. Now, they'll want to put it right, but no team's done that to them. Now, do I think we'll do the same? Because this is the thing, isn't it? Like, we had a different performance against Arsenal. We kind of dug in against Arsenal. City, we went for the jugular. 
So I'm interested to see what he's going to do, particularly without probably Watkins, without McGinn. But I look at it and think like, whatever tactics he decides to go for, a draw would be a great result for us. It really would, right? But I, I, I want to see us go there. And oh, do you know what? I want to just show fucking Sky and the rest of the media, like, stop doing us down. You know, they took, they did a thing the weekend about all the, all the title challenges have had all these games against each other. And I'm thinking, we've been, we've been Arsenal and Man City back to back. Like, mention us a little bit, but the only way we're going to get people to do that is actually start getting results in games like this. And we've got yeah. three big opportunities this, this rest of this season by playing, obviously, Arsenal, Liverpool and Wednesday night, Man City. What a way to put yourself back on the map. And we could win it 15-0 and they probably wouldn't talk about it. But you get my point. Like, it's a real opportunity to say, we're Aston Villa. Don't forget about us. Yeah, absolutely. I, I know we'll do a kind of full preview um, probably tomorrow. But yeah, it's, you know, in terms of that kind of opportunity that we've put ourselves into, you know, 59 points at the moment, Arsenal and Man City drew, you know, we we, we get into a situation where we can beat Man, we could beat Man City with two points behind them. And then you're almost looking at, OK, can we, can, can you finish third or, or you know, second, can can you kind of really put a challenge in? You know, is is that the, the situation? Because I said it, you know, before in the international break, and we talked about it. It's like if you look at the if you look at the games as, as a whole, it's you know the key games to get seal Champions League football are Wolves, Brighton, Chelsea, um, yeah. Wolves, Brighton, Chelsea. I think maybe Bournemouth or some, something like that. And then you've obviously got Palace Liverpool. and Brentford. If you can pick up any bonus points against, um, you know, the three big boys, Liverpool, Arsenal, Man City, then you probably look at, obviously, that, you know, you've got to win those games. You know, we could, we could, we could, you know, get beat off Brentford. Who knows? But assuming that, that that's the situation, any bonus points you can pick up against those three big boys, not only are you having a say in the title race, but you're actually putting yourself in the frame to finish, you know, in that in that top two, top one, two or three position. Now I'm not I'm not saying anything about title challenges or anything like that. What Come I'm on, Rich. Is, Come on. <laughs> what I'm saying is you get yourself into that into that conversation and you, we won't be in that conversation until we until we produce another result like that when at the business end of the season. And that this is where it is now. And you know, could could we be People, it's still that still that talk of like, oh, Man United, Man United, can they still catch? But no one's talking. Can Villa catch second or third? And it's it's not until we beat that one of those teams again, it's not going to come up in the conversation. But how do you think about that? How do you feel about that? And I'm pretty sure I know the answer. But yeah, how do you feel about that kind of rather than looking down at a Man United, it's looking up at a on Man City or in Arsenal? Well, it's like thinking, like, when am I going to die or what can I do with the rest of my life to enjoy it? Like, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Because, you know, we, we know we're all going to die at some point, but if you spend the rest of your life just thinking, oh, another day, could it be today? Like, what's the point? There's no point, is there? And if you look at the whole, like, clearly, you know, the media are going to talk about Man United because they're absolutely, you know, in love with them as a club. They are nine. Uh, sorry, they're, we're 11 points ahead of Man United. They've got a game in hand, obviously, right? So that would make it eight. And we're eight points off of Liverpool. So we're closer to the top than we are to Man United. And yet Man United are in a race for fourth with us. And we're not even involved. Not even in that. They're not even talking about us in, in relation to Man City. We're only five points off then. You know, well, that's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's madness. Listen, the sensible discussion, if we're going to be sensible for a second, is to think let's just focus on the battle for top five because... Champions League is almost certainly going to go to fifth. But for me, I don't want safe, sensible conversations. You know my little quote, Rich, about ships in harbour. Ships in harbour are safe, but that's not what ships are built for. You know, I don't want to finish fifth, even if fifth is Champions League. I want to finish fourth because then it doesn't feel like we've got the bonus spot that they gave to us. You know, like Clubman of the Year. I feel like they give us fifth. It's like, oh, well done, you finished fifth, Philly. You wouldn't have gotten in normally, but we've let you in this season. And then I think to myself, you know what? Sport in history is about moments you wouldn't expect. Who expected Liverpool to come back in Istanbul in 2005 and win that game? Who expected Didier Drogba to do that header right at the end of the Bayern Munich game? Who would have expected all these different things happen in sport over the years? Um, it's definitely ships in harbour, not shits in harbour. <laughs> 
And who's going to expect Aston Villa to get results from those three big teams? The chances are, probability-wise, it's probably not going to happen. We're, our squad isn't as good, and they're going for the title, and they've got a lot of experience in, in, in these, these type of games. But why not? Why not? You know, and of course, we lose to Man City. He probably puts it to bed because, of course, then with they're still still having a game in hand on us, they would then be eight points clear of us. It probably would be the end. But you know what? While there's still an ch- opportunity to go and play against them in any other situation, you know, if Leeds were going to play Leicester in the championship team above them, they'd be saying, oh, well, you know, whatever the distance in the points was, got opportunity to claw some points back here. And we've got to go for it, haven't we? Because while it's still possible, you've got to believe if Vincent Company still believe in that Burnley can get out of it and, you know, rather than need to win every single game for the rest of the season and hope everyone above them loses, you know, while it's still possible, it's still possible. Let's not forget, not that long ago, we overhauled the biggest gap uh, of any team to, to beat relegation. Did we four games to go? We were seven points behind. Well, we did that. And last season we were 11th for about 20 weeks. And then we all of a sudden pushed up into seventh, could have finished could have finished sixth, you know, had we managed to hold on against Liverpool, um, you know. So, yeah, yeah. D- you know, we've we've been on a wonderful, wonderful, like, run for the last 18 months, which is just phenomenal. So, it is it is one of those where the player's mindset will be, and, and, and Michael said there, the mindset is go there looking for a win. And like you've just said before, um, and I, I, I say I don't want to talk too much on, on the city game, but it's only two days, two days away. But they will, they will be. And again, I don't want to say this before because they can like absolutely put teams away, right? They can do that, but their mindset has been a little bit different this season in a lot of ways. Like they haven't. I, and, and I think because we've beat them and we beat them so well, and you look at, you know, let's say Oli is fit, Leon Bailey, Moussa Diaby, um, you know, Tielemans with his passing, Douglas Louise, and, you know, Pau Torres with his quality of passing. They'll have like situations where they're thinking, Villa are a team that we have to worry about a little bit. And Pep's already said how much he admires Unai Emery and the job that he's done. And he knows what a great coach he is. So, it's not like they'll be going, right, let's just control the game. Let's just steamroll a Villa here like they've maybe do with one or two other teams. They will be worried about you know, what Villa can do to them as well. Yeah, of course they will. And and let's be clear, right, they're a fantastic team. They won a ton of trophies last season, right? But I look at that team now. I mean, obviously, Ake got injured, injured at the weekend, right? If Walker's not back, then, you know, they've got Ruben Diaz, obviously, he's good. Um Gvardial, a Kanji. Gvardial didn't have the best time at Villa Park. You know, I'm not, I don't, I think, as we heard Roy Keane say, they've got a League Two striker up top. Look, he, he, he could score four goals, couldn't he, against Thailand. And when he's on it, he's absolutely unbelievable. But I just don't think there's that aura. When they had Gundogan and they had Mares and, you know, and even going back with Aguero and, you know, they've had certain players over time. I think they're a little bit brittle now. And I think they've got some really good players. And I've clearly, like, you know, um, Rico Lewis is good and Oscar Bob's good and but they're not the level of some of those players are they? Grealish is in great form Doku's been a bit hit and miss I think Bernardo Silva has been the same as he was maybe last season when he was unbelievable De Bruyne was a bit off at the weekend now they, it could all click into gear and they could beat us by a hat full of goals but if it's a chink in the armour you've got to believe and you've got to capitalise on that and you've got to sniff blood it's 11 players against 11 players and this Aston Villa team you mentioned obviously the times we've come from out of nowhere and, and got, you know, gone on great runs. This would be a statement, statement to, to send out, wouldn't it? It would be a statement. And that's what life's about. So I just, I just really hope, you know, and do you know what, as well, I love about anything else. It's opportunities, isn't it? I love situations where someone takes an opportunity they wouldn't normally get. Is John Duran normally going to get an opportunity to lead the line for a team at the Etihad, Man City going for the league? He's got an opportunity, probably with a Watkins injury, to, to lead the line. And he's been a bit hit and miss, particularly when he started games. Imagine what a chance. He's a confident guy. Well, look when he came on last season. He Was it last season we lost 3-1, but we came into it right at the end and he nearly scored like yeah. an absolute worldie. Yeah. So he, he'll put worry into them. Um, yeah, I, like I say, I think uh, in terms of like formations, in terms of kind of how what I think the starting lineup is, I think we'll probably wait till tomorrow to see Emery's press conference, and we'll, we'll do a show tomorrow. But in terms of mindset, I think we we we, we definitely 
we definitely have something to go for a hundred percent in this game and, and, and all the comments are saying exactly the same thing. Uh, I will get to some in a sec. Peter says we're 15 points clear of seventh, 11th clear of sixth, fifth is, fifth is the worst we can do almost. And it does feel like that. You know, I know I think Rachel mentioned, you know, week 33 is where Emery will start to kind of look at yep. where we are in the league because that kind of, you know, five games to go, et cetera, five or six games to go, et cetera, et cetera, is kind of, you know, almost where you're going to, you know, you where you're going to finish. So, if we can get anything like a point tomorrow, uh, Wednesday, sorry, three points against Brentford, you know, you, you then depend on other teams' results. You know, what, Tottenham have got to go to West Ham, which is a tough game. Um, Chelsea are at home to Man United. We, you'd never know what Chelsea are going to turn up. So, you know, if we can get like a point in that game on, on Wednesday, or even by the by dreams, three points, then you put some daylight in between yourself and them in, it, in its... In its um, when he gets to that week thirty three, then you're looking at okay, we 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 we're really in with a with with a shot of you know securing fifth spot at least. So that would be great. That would be great. Um, just in terms of you know back up thinking uh, from Saturday, any any performances? You know, I know we've kind of talked Martinez with a crucial save. I know we talked about some of the, you know, some of the substitutions. Anyone anyone kind of catch your eye in terms of, um. Impressive, impressive performance, you know, particularly going into to Wednesday's game. Well, like it's Rogers best game. Obviously, we discussed him earlier on, but I thought there was a few moments from Rogers where he looked like he's, you know, he's going to be a real star. I thought Zaniolo came on and was, you know, really, really good, really effective. I was with Duran, so that was obviously really good to see. We've obviously touched on those. I thought other than um, Moreno, who didn't have one of his best games, got in some good positions, but his delivery was, was poor. I thought the defence were really good, generally. And I think, think they, you know, I think it's good to see Carlos back there now, obviously, with the presence that he's got. He does give us that physicality of a, of a Mings in terms of a defender there that can, can do that, um, that sort of strongman role. Um, I thought Louise was really good. I thought Diaby was Diaby was obviously good. And obviously, goal and assist, what more can you ask for? But I thought Louise was really good. I think it was great to see. That without, and I do think we'll really miss him again on Wednesday. Cop of type of player he is, that talismanic person. But without without him, John McGinn, we've taken from West Ham away and Wolves at home. You would again, if we were playing West Ham away next game, Wolves at home, you'd be going, oh, a couple of tricky games without your captain. And actually, we've taken four points, four points from those two games, which is just a brilliant, brilliant return. So. Yeah, I, I just think that again. Like, there's a lot of these players that are that are just performing at such a good level each week that it's almost going under under the radar a little bit. And someone like Moreno has a bit of an off day, but it doesn't really affect. You know, mm. Aston Villa a few years back, you got four or five players having an off day, and you get you're getting beaten. Yeah, and yeah, we're going to need that level of consistency now. You talk about obviously about the game, the game's coming up. You know, Man United have got Chelsea, then they've got Liverpool. You know, it could be almost virtually over if we if they only get say one point or less out of those games and we get a win. Even if we lose to City, we beat Brentford. It's another another increase on them. So, yeah, it's it's a really really interesting time in the season, and it feels like every single game, whether it's Championship, Premier League, wherever it is now, is just absolutely yeah, there's so critical. much tournament. Must, yeah. must win, must win, must <laughs> win. Actually, it's not is it really? Because you could just go, you know what? We could just say now, let's write off. City, Arsenal, Liverpool. Let's get four more wins. Maybe sneaking away win at you know Palace, and then we've, we've, we're safe in the fifth. But that's not exciting, is it? The exciting. Nah, you want to go for the wins, like John said. You know, we want to think like a top four, so we can't talk about free hits. We've got to go for it. Absolutely, absolutely. John totally uh, also said Tielemans was excellent. Yeah, Paul Tielemans thinks Watkins will be back, so that's. Uh, that's that's potential Paul, good news. Paul, do you know something we don't know? Have you heard something? Just drop in the comments. Yeah, if drop you it in the comments. Yeah. Uh, Gazzardini and Zaniolo and Diaby and Tielemans were impressive. Deco says uh, Carlos will pocket Haaland on his day. Yeah, he, he would. He, he did. He already has. Um, not impressed with Spurs, says Gary. Always concede first. And he won't always come back. Yes, they do have to keep doing that at the moment, which is, which is interesting. Um, <laughs> yeah. Did you see? I don't know. Did, um, Carlos put gave his shirt to a, a player in the uh, to a kid in the crowd, and honestly, he, he just makes anyone look like yeah, man. look like a wimp. He's just literally like chiselled out of like. I uh, saw that earlier on, right? Bronze. When I was eating, 
I've not had much many snacks this Easter. I was eating a bit of Easter chocolate, and I saw that on like an Instagram reel, and I thought as I was eating this chocolate, I saw Carlos, and I thought, oh God, put the chocolate <laughs> down, Kevin, put the chocolate down. <laughs> Yeah, I think you might have to have a few more trips to the the gym, Kev. To be honest, yeah, to get so. uh, to get the, the body like Carlos, but yeah, it's um, it's enough to, to make anyone feel a little bit inadequate. To be honest, uh, Adam said Rogers looks like he's been with us for a couple of seasons instead of just a couple of months. Yeah, I really liked him. Really liked him. Emery's brilliant coaching, um, says Rachel. Yeah, I mean, he just he never ceases to amaze. To be honest, and again, we talked about this after the Luton game. You know that kind of feeling when we score is re- that emotion is really coming out of Unai at the moment because he knows how important every goal every win is at the moment every point is at the moment and it's it is yeah. good to see yeah it's really really good to see because he is he's all about the players he's all about letting them have the adulation but he is absolutely loving it isn't he yeah <laughs> yeah Dionysus. Dionysus. I don't know who that is. You have to tell me a bit, yeah. a bit, a bit of banter. <laughs> probably, probably. Yeah, yeah. Good. I'll take but, that. Um, but yeah, like I say, I mean, it takes us nicely into this game, and we we said, you know, Wolves was gonna Wolves was one of those kind of banana skin games. I never think that players pay too much attention. It's more for the fans, isn't it, to say, oh, we haven't beaten them for so many years, blah blah blah. It's just about playing the here and now, but. You know, it was it was one of those games where you think, right, get the three points in this game, really takes you into confidence going into Wednesday, and we, we we totally did the job. And you said at the start, we've a bit in the tank as well, and you can definitely take that into Wednesday, especially you know Man City have had played Arsenal. Yes, they had a free. Um, yes, they had a nil nil draw, but they've had a day's less rest and all that kind of jazz. You know, we it's a big opportunity for us to keep that momentum going. Well, days less rest. Uh, Ake probably out now as well. Whether they're going to have a walk back, I don't know. But, you know, you, you obviously get my point. They're obviously Stones injured as well. Um, and they need to win because for them being at home to Arsenal, the onus is on them, really. I do think actually Arsenal will, will buzz in about, you know, putting 50, 50, yeah. <laughs> love it. Love it. Uh, putting like, you know, 500 men behind the ball, like, you know, um, when they had an opportunity against a weaker Man City team, they might regret that at the end of the season. Um, but yeah, like I, I, I just think there is there is momentum to, to go go into it for us Wednesday night. Wednesday night, and of course, you know it's a it's a late game. Um, be under the lights. Their fans will be up for it. Um, if we can get one of those notorious fast starts we've had in the past, it could um, could upset the Apricot. Although it almost be one of those situations where we might say you scored too early. Remember when we were two up? Oh no, side of the season. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I am, I am, I am pretty confident. I have to say, but I'm gonna say, I'm gonna save that for for tomorrow for match preview time. But yeah, like I say, reflecting on Saturday, great win, really, really good atmosphere. You know, once we kind of went, you know, in that second half, once we kind of went two nil up, and these home games, you know, coming up, the fans are gonna play a huge, huge part because you, like you said, if we can pick up the odd result away from home fantastic but these home games are going to be absolutely crucial and the european nights as well mate i mean what how could you know would you have put us in this position like i know i know i hate i hate that kind of oh look where we were like you know x amount of times but i'm just thinking of it now we're in fourth in the league we're in the quarterfinals of a european competition is this an april fourth? exactly like it's just mad isn't it it, 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 it not. It, I mean, eighteen months ago, right? Steven Gerrard was in charge of this club, and we'd what got rid of Dean Smith because obviously it wasn't really going anywhere, and we're languishing the bottom quarter of the league. You know, we're getting beaten left, left, right, and centre. You know, can't can't win. Getting scraping wins when we get wins. Getting beaten heavily. In eight, in less than eighteen months, to be in a situation where everyone like don't do not adjust your sets or or, or pinch yourself. We're fourth in the league in April. In April? It's unbelievable. And if we're going to do the Gary O'Neill school, school of talk, if we'd not had so many injuries, I think we, we might have been... I think if we'd not had so many injuries you've had, so, been so unlucky with it, I think we might still be in the title race genuinely. I know like I've got this wishful thinking sense and beat City, see what happens. But, 
you know, imagine if we beat Man, Man United when we were two up or beat them at home when we should have. You know, all these could have, should have, would have, right? Sound like Gary Neal, I don't know. Um, or Pochettino. Well, look, according but... to O'Neill, this was the this, this was the scoreline, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I love that. I absolutely love that. <laughs> Apparently, according to the XG, like we we'd still be fourth this season, and they'd be apparently they'd be fourth bottom. Have you seen that game? Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So and that, yeah. So anyway, but um, yeah, I, it's it's pinch yourself time, Richard. European competition quarter final, fourth in the league. You know, we might not even need fifth spot. We might get it for finishing top four. But these are the moments now for the players where someone going to stand up and Wolves. The reason why that game was so great as well, because of our terrible record. But under this manager, we are slaying dragons left, right and centre. From his very first game, Man United, who we never beat, to all these different times we've beaten these teams we never beat. Well, you've seen the one about our, I think I saw AVFC Stato, friend of the, friend of the show, put a, the um, put a tweet out earlier saying like, it's the last 13 or 14 times we've played Man City, we've lost every game, the cumulative score of like 40 odd seven. Well, at some point that's got to change, isn't it? Why can't it be Wednesday night? Why can't it be Wednesday night? Absolutely, mate. I think that is a great place to leave tonight because we will be back tomorrow for match preview time. Um, And uh, yeah, hopefully with more news on players available, get our match predictions in, get our... um, get our lineup predictions in but yeah exactly why can't we go for it 100 percent, kev great show as always guys make sure uh thank you for all watching make sure you hit that like button hit that subscribe button if you're new and um, we are literally 25 away from 3600 as i say we're going to be back tomorrow for match preview uh and then we've got instant match reaction as well hopefully an, a, a winning instant match reaction gareth will be back later this week for talking tactics as well and then we've got another match preview for brentford so the shows will be coming thick and fast so make sure you hit the notification bell as well as i say guys thank you for all your support thank you all for watching and as always remember we all follow the villa Thank you.